And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Cat of Amontillado. <laughs> Fools and cowards, Montracer. Fools and cowards. What I say about your ancestors is true, Montracer. Every last word of it. <laughs> that fat, dull witted fool, Fortunato. That he should dare to insult the names of my ancestors. For that I swear, Fortunato shall die. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Cask of Amontillado. And now for our story. Adapted for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled The Cask of Amontillado. <laughs> As my story begins, it was carnival time in Venice, a time of feasting and merrymaking. Fortunato and I had been celebrating with all the rest. Perhaps we'd indulge our taste for wine too greatly that day, but that was when it began. The day was almost spent, and we were standing in front of my house watching the crowd. Ah, yes, my friend. The carnival has been a great success. Through Fortunato. Did you know that it was one of my ancestors who made the plans for the carnival over four generations ago? What? Oh, come now, Montrezor, you're not serious. <laughs> it's no joke, Fortunato. It's in the records of the family for any who wish to see. Ah, I cannot believe you. He was one of the foremost swordsmen of his age. In fact, all the male members of the family were renowned for their ability with a foil. <laughs> even you, Montrezor? <laughs> yes, my friend, even Montrezor. <laughs> with those spindly legs, you, a swordsman? <laughs> Take care, Fortunato. Oh, what? You dare threaten me. How do you like it, Montrezor? How do you like the point of my rapier at your throat? Fortunato. Please, even you fancy yourself a great swordsman. <laughs> it's so funny, Montrezor, to look at you all white in the face, so frightened, <laughs> so brave. <laughs> I do not know about your ancestors, Montrezor, but you certainly have made this carnival the funniest in a long time. <laughs> a great swordsman. <laughs> I bid you a brave farewell, Montrezor. <laughs> then that I began to hate Fortunato. He turned and disappeared to the crowd. Oh, he was gone. The echoes of his spat laughing his face remained in my brain. The great sword. I went into the house and thought to see no more of him that night. Little by little, the remaining hours of the carnival wasted away until finally I heard the great bell striking midnight, marking the end of the celebration. I sat in the library reading, but the printed words refused to be silent and rearranged themselves into a likeness of Fortunato's face. <laughs> so brave, Montresor. So brave. My mind was playing tricks on me. That I knew. But of a sudden, a shadow fell across the pages. Hey, Montresor. Fortunato. How did you get in? <laughs> Don't be alarmed, my good Montresor. One of your servants was so kind as to allow me entrance. What do you want? Oh, come now, Montresor. You wouldn't refuse a good friend the hospitality of your house, would you? I forgot. It's past midnight. The wine shops are closed. <laughs> yes, quite true, Montresor. <laughs> so I came to you. May I offer you some wine? Well, I hope you would. Yes, I imagine you did. Here, Fortunato. Yeah, many thanks, Montresor. <laughs> There's nothing like fine wine. That's why I like you so much, Montresor. Why? Well, no matter what you are, your wine cellar is filled with the finest of wine. Thank you for your compliment, Fortunato. <laughs> but uh, there's one wine you do not have. And that is? Amontillado. Someday I hope that you will procure some Amontillado. Amontillado is the rarest wine in all of Italy, Fortunato. Well, but for your friend, Fortunato, you might perhaps get some. We shall see, my friend. Now you were about to leave. <laughs> yes, Montresor, I shall leave. Uh, but before I do, pour me another glass of wine. <laughs> I drink to the great uh, 
swordsman in your family. <laughs> you needn't lie to me about your family, Montracer. I know them for what they are. And that was? Fools and cowards, Montracer, all of them. What you say of my ancestors should be well-tempered with thought, Fortunato. Oh, no, it was, Montracer, it was. Fortunato, if you... No matter. You're drunk. You're not responsible for what you say. Drunk? <laughs> I never drink enough to muddle my brain, Montracer. I mean what I say. Just the same. I'll excuse you this time. Why, excuse me? What I have said is the truth. I think perhaps you'd better leave. <laughs> yes, my friend, I shall leave. <laughs> but before I do, however, may I ask if you're going to the party tomorrow night? Yes, I am. Why? Oh, merely asking. Of course, Rosita will be there. Yes, I know. <laughs> Lovely girl, Rosita. Yes, I know. Well, I shall be going. Do. I shall accompany you to the door. Uh, no need, my friend. I'm steady enough to make it myself. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow night, Montracer. Yes, tomorrow night. Oh, and uh, what I said about your ancestors still holds true, Montracer. <laughs> oh, and Montracer, don't forget the Amontillado. <laughs> decided to let the insult pass this time. But if it occurred again, I would settle the score with Fortunato. The next night, I was with Rosita at the ball. It's a lovely party, Montrez. Yes, Rosita, and with you here, it's all the lovely. You flatter me. It is deserved. Rosita. Yes? I've been observing you closely of late, Rosita. Indeed. Yes. And do you find me pleasing? Well, you know I do. I was hoping... Oh, well, here you are, Montreal. Out in the balcony. I thought... You thought you'd lost me, huh? <laughs> Well, listen, it'll take much more than you to outwit me, Montreal. I wondered where you were, Fortunato. Oh, indeed, Rosita? <laughs> well, of course I do not doubt it. Montreal is such a terrible boor. I do not make excuses, my friend. Family were boors, and therefore you cannot help it. <laughs> Can you, Rosita? Sure that I. Forgive me for bothering you, Rosita. I have come looking for you in the hope that I may have the next dance, Rosita. But I promise to. Don't let me worry, Rosita. Dance, dance with Fortunato. Are you sure you don't mind? Only too sure. Montresor doesn't mind. How could such a dolt does he mind anything? <laughs> Shall we go, my dear? Hey, goodbye, Montresor. <laughs> he would go so far as to insult me before Rosita, to deliberately interfere between Rosita and myself, to... I knew then that Fortunato would pay for his insults, for I hated him more than anyone else on earth. It was then I swore that Fortunato would die. Back now to our story, adapted especially for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled... The Cask of Amontillado. I determined then to even the score, to revenge the desecration of my name, of my family honor, and immediately into my brain flooded a host of ideas to destroy him. What were his weak points? How could I catch him at a disadvantage? If only I could lure him down into the catacombs beneath my house. Few people knew of the vast subterranean caverns that lay beneath the house. But how to get them there? Let me see. Something he said might give me a clue. Something he said. <laughs> Fools and cowards, Montracer. Fools and cowards. Oh, no, not that. Something else. And what they said about your ancestors still holds true, Montracer. And Montracer, don't forget the Amontillado. The Amontillado. The Amontillado. Don't forget the Amontillado. Don't forget the Amontillado. Yes, that was it. The Amontillado. The cask of a Montpellier. Wine drinker, was he? A connoisseur of fine wines, eh? That was it. That was the way to accomplish my revenge. A Montreliado, the rarest wine in all of Italy. Fortunato would die for a glass of a Montreliado. Yes. Fortunato would die for a glass of a Montreliado. Accordingly, a few days later, I sent him a message saying I would like to meet him at his favorite place of entertainment with wine merchants in, of course. I waited anxiously for his answer. Yes? A message for you, Signor Montresor. From whom? Signor Fortunato bade me give it to you. 
Well, thank you. Good. Well, thank you for your tidings, lad. Here's something for your trouble. Oh, thank you, Senor Montreso. Fortunato had agreed to meet me in the morrow. My nerves were tense and the time moved so slowly. I sat by the hourglass the entire night and part of the next day watching the grains of sand mark off the time. Finally, when I knew I could bear to wait no longer, the time arrived. Ah, Senor Montreso. Oh, good day, Peroni. I was just leaving. Senor Fortunato was over by the window. Uh, confidentially, Montreso, I'm glad you're here. Well, he's had too much to drink. He, he's a destructive man. Well, I should take care of him, Peroni. Uh, thank you, Senor Montreso. Uh, while I'm gone, and if you want something, just call my wife. Uh, she's in the rear. Thank you, Peroni. Good day, Senor Montreso. So you come in, Montreso. Come and join me. I'm quite glad you could meet me today, Fortunato. I hope I didn't inconvenience you by asking you to meet me here. <laughs> Absolutely not, Montreso. If you had, I wouldn't be here. What are you drinking? Sherry. Will you have a glass? Yes, you can pour me a glass of sherry. Well, I assure you, my friend, it's the very best. There, there you are. <laughs> Uh, well, excuse me, Montreza. I have a cold. You should take better care of yourself, Fortunato. Okay, it will pass. Well, then, tell me. What did you wish to see me about? Perhaps I'd better not mention it. Oh, come, come, Montreza. Don't tell me you wanted to see me for nothing. Well, I wanted your advice on something. Oh? What? You see, I have procured a cask of what is supposed to be a Montreal. A Montreal? Where? When? From whom? That I cannot tell you. But you see, I have my doubts about it. A cask of a Montreal? A whole cask? It sounds impossible. I agree with you, my friend. It does sound impossible. Perhaps I was foolish to pay the full amount of Yado price without consulting you in the matter. But you were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. No, I can't get over it, Montillado. I have my doubts for you. Montillado! And I'm a satisfied one. Montillado! I had contended with Dr. Ah! Lucchese. If anyone should know, it should be he. He will tell no, you... No, Lucchese is a fool. But he cannot tell a Montillado from, from the common sherry. And yet some people say his taste is a match for your own. They lie. Well, that is a matter of opinion. Well, they lie, I tell you. <laughs> Lucchese is an apostate. I think I'd better be going. I'm going with you. My friend, no. I will not impose upon your good nature. I you will not go to Lucchese. Montresa, are you insulting me? Well, no, Fortunato. I merely thought... I care not for what you think. <laughs> I will go with you. It is really your cold that I worry about, Fortunato. It is damp in the cellar. It's very damp and very cold. Ah, it matters not to me. This cold is a mere nothing. But a Montreado. Yeah, I must know if you've been swindled. Oh, and uh, Montresa. Yes? Uh, forget about Lucchese. He knows nothing about fine wines. As you say, my friend. Shall we go? When we reached the house, there were no attendants present. I'd made sure that we'd be entirely alone. <laughs> Before we go downstairs, my friend, let us fortify ourselves against the cold and dampness with some wine. The catacombs would undoubtedly make your cold much worse. Yeah, a capital idea, Montresor. A little sherry, if you please. Yeah, no, not too much, <laughs> but not too little, either. I have no fears, Fortunato, my friend. It'll be just yeah, right. Yes, yeah. Let me have it. This <laughs> ah, makes me feel better. Much better. Have another glass, Fortunato. Yeah, no, 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 no. Please, please. please. Well, on second thought, Montresor, <laughs> yes, I will have another glass. <laughs> I thought so. Here you are, Fortunato. Yeah, many thanks, Montresa. Drink heartily. Who knows, you may not be alive tomorrow to enjoy it. I, uh... <laughs> yes, Montresa, how right you are. <laughs> what a sense of humor you have. <laughs> but I intend to be alive tomorrow. <laughs> but then, who can tell? <laughs> yes, who can tell? Back now to our story. Adapted especially for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled, The Cask of Amontillado. We finished the wine and sat talking for a few minutes. Then, seeing his eagerness was at its height, I led him to the archway that led down into the vaults. We passed down a long and winding stairway. At length, we came to the foot of the descent. 
and stood together on the damp ground of the catacombs of the Montresors. Here we are, Fortunato, in the catacombs of the Montresor. Yes, but the cask of the Montresor, where is it? It is farther on, Fortunato. Uh, see, the walls of this place are so dirty. I hate to be caught down here. <laughs> How long have you had that cough? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Uh, let us proceed. No, we'll go back. Your health is precious. You'll be ill and I'll be responsible. We might even become lost. Besides, there's always no cases. Enough. The cough is nothing. I shall not die of a cough. True. True, Fortunato. You will not die of a cough. I had no intention of alarming you unnecessarily, Fortunato, but you should use the proper caution. And there's a bottle of wine on the rack here. And just have some to make you forget the dismalness of this place. <laughs> yes, by all means. It is so damp and cold down here. Sorry, I have no glass to offer you. No, don't stand on ceremony, Montresor. <laughs> here, let me have the bottle. Here. This is the family crypt, is it not? Yes, this is the crypt of the Montresors, an ancient and honorable family. Yeah, well then, I drink to the buried that repose around us. And I, I drink to your long life. <laughs> yes, that's a good toast. In my long life. You know what, Tracer? He's vaults are extensive. What would happen if we were to be lost down here? I will not be lost, Fortunato. Still, uh, perhaps we should go back. And leave the Amontillado? Well, we could return another time. If you're afraid, I can always get Lucchese. Uh, no, 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 no. Let us proceed to the Amontillado. After all, we shall only be here for a little while. If you insist, Fortunato. If you insist. <laughs> Coughing grew worse, but I said nothing. I could see that he was not quite so enthusiastic about finding the Amontillado. We passed through a range of low arches, descended, passed on, and descending again, arrived at a deep crypt. Hey, Montresor, where is the Amontillado? The Amontillado? Oh, yes, in the crypt, Fortunato. I, I can't... Where? In that low crypt ahead of you. Why, oh, it's just tall enough for a man of my size. Yes, isn't it? But, uh... I do not see the cask of a Montreado. Oh, but you will, Fortunato. You will. You wouldn't want to turn back now, would you? A man of your courage. I will not have it said that Fortunato is a coward. Now then, just where is the Montreado, Montreal? Lift your torch a little higher, Fortunato. You'll see it. Yeah. Where? Just inside this niche, Fortunato. Just inside. Yeah, but why did you... Why did I hide it here? You forget that Montreal was the rarest wine in all of Italy, Fortunato. <laughs> yes, you're wise, Montreal. Now, Fortunato, herein lies the Montreal. As for Ducati... He's a fool. Yes, Montreal. The whole cast of Montreal. Yes, go in. Get to the Montreal, Fortunato. Yes, yes, yes. The Montreal. This rock is in the way. Put your hands up high and push, Fortunato. No, higher. That's it. That's just... What are you doing, just Taking you, Fortunato. But I'm facing it. The Amontillado. Now, Fortunato, dance. Dance with Rosina. You should have seen the look of terror on his round face. He could barely move. The crypt was just the right size for him. Just the right size for him to die in. Then I began to work. I began walling up the entrance to the niche in which Fortunato was chained. Montresor, what are you doing? Even a dolt can understand what I'm doing, Fortunato. Even a dolt such as Montresor. Please, Montresor, don't wall me up in here. I, I, I didn't mean the things I said. Please, please, I, I, I promise I shall leave Rosita alone. Yes, Fortunato, you will leave Rosita alone. Have mercy, Montresor. I'm sorry for what I said. It's too late, Fortunato, too late to make excuses. I had barely finished with the first tier of masonry when I discovered that the effect of the wine had worn off Fortunato. He began shaking his chains in an effort to throw them off. I don't get loose, Montresor. Do you know good to take those chains? They're strong, Fortunato. I made sure of that. My face. Look, I I'll give you anything you want. Rosita, money a thousand lira. 
Anything at all. Anything. Now, Fortunato, I find this payment enough. What's this? Please. Please have pity on me. Pity, Fortunato? You ask for pity? I have no pity for you. For the love of heaven, I'm crazy. His head was twisted over his shoulder, watching me as I piled brick upon brick. With each stone I put into position, his eyes took on a look of increasing terror and torture. He made little sounds in his throat. I continued my work. I had finished laying the seventh tier of rocks before I paused to rest. The wall was almost upon a level with my chest. Help me, someone! Help me! My face is mad. My face is trying to kill me! Help me! Anyone at all! You make shot all you wish. No one can hear you. <laughs> someone will know that you took me here. Saw me. That's what they'll find me, even if I'm dead. And you will be punished. Few people know of these catacombs, Fortunato. And those who do are my friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a very good joke indeed, Montrezer. Who would have thought that you had such a sense of humor? <laughs> but uh, don't you think your little joke has gone uh, far enough? <laughs> we will have many laugh over it as we drink our wine, eh? <laughs> I will have many laugh over it, Fortunato. I don't think you'll be able to laugh. <sighs> Montresor. <laughs> Montresor, you can't be in earnest. So much in earnest that you'll die for it, Fortunato. Please, Montresor. Please, please, Montresor. He began to scream. But then, after a while, he was silent. His eyes watched every move I made. With a great deal of effort, I raised the last stone and shoved it into position. I waited for a few minutes and then called to him. Fortunato... Dear me, where is Fortunato? I look about me. So dark down here. So depressive. So cold and damp. I must remember to stay away from here. I might catch Fortunato's cold. So runs tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. To hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional. And any similarity to actual events or persons living or dead is purely coincidental.